Hey guys, Mackie here with Battle Drill 6. Today we're going to redo and uh, go over a little bit of our video on our actual kit setup and our battle gear setup. Um, you'll notice we've got a little bit different background here. That's mostly because I was bored with the other things that I was doing. And so this one, pictures of my wife and me and my, our wedding and everything. So, so there's some cool stuff hanging on the background. It makes it a little bit more fun. So let's jump right into this. Um, we, when, we, when we talk about our gear setup, we want to talk about three different aspects of this. So we fight from our, uh, I'm sorry, fight from our vest, we survive from our belt, and we live out of our pack. Um, and so we're going to have those three different systems going on here. We're going over just two of them today. We're going to go over the vest and the belt, um, and I'll bring the belt up so you all can see it. I know it's not in the in this video right now, you're you're not getting that bottom half of it. Uh, but we'll do the uh, we'll do the vest first. You can see this vest here. I'm not crazy about these mag holders, so uh, don't worry about that. We'll, we'll eventually, we'll swap these out and do something different. Um, I've gone back and forth with different ones on here, uh, but uh, in the, I end up coming back to these cloth ones just because they seem to be a little bit more robust. Uh, Kydex ones they seem to break uh, whenever you're doing anything real rough with them. So I just I, if, if anybody's got any suggestions, throw it down in the comment box. Those do help me out, to, um, and I'll try some different ones out. But uh, I've tried lots of different brands out, and I just end up coming back to these cloth ones uh, because they seem to hold everything in real well, and uh, they don't they don't break on me. Uh, but uh, the way we want to set up our our gear is. We want to get some magazines right here in the front, and uh, so obviously we don't want to block these, right? So admin pouches, guys, you see, uh, especially lieutenants, army marines, we see all our, all our second lieutenants, they put this stupid ass admin pouch up here on the front, and it blocks for magazines. For one, you don't have that much going on that you need an admin pouch there. You can carry notepads, maps, pencils, all that stuff in your pockets, especially when you're in the military and you have multicams on, and you got guys, they, they're pockets everywhere, they've got endless pockets on multicams, they got them on your ankles, they got them up here on your shoulders. They, got, they have pockets everywhere, so you don't need an admin pouch up here. Take that thing off and get rid of it. It's not doing any good, and all it's going to do is block your magazines when you're actually trying to pull them out when you need to get to them. Get that crap out of the way. So up here, we want this to be as free as possible. Um, you can see up here I've got a Surefire light holder uh, from, from my helmet lights. Um, I don't actually use this that much when I was in the military. I find that as a civilian I use it more because I don't wear my K-Pod um, because I don't like them. Uh, but so this is a little bit more handy to have a light there. Even that, guys, I really don't use this. This could probably be dissed and not really affect me. Uh, you can see I do have some uh, pistol mag holders here on the front. Uh, really, that's mostly just to have the extra pistol mags for training purposes. Uh, you really don't need this here. I've got two on my belt. Those are my main ones there uh, for actually the idea of fighting with it. Then over here, we would keep something in here like a Gerber, Leatherman, etc. Uh, if you like to have those with you, I do. They are handy uh, for anything working on your weapons, but I keep mine in my bag uh, just because I like my kit to be a little bit more streamlined. Now over here, we have our iPad, or our iFac, I'm sorry, iPad, our iFac on steroids. So this is one of those, I think it's a Maxpedition one, but it's one of those rip away pouches. Um, and so this is, this is obviously a beefed up iFac, so we've got lots of medical gear in here for taking care of other casualties as well as for dealing with our shelf, and then it's on that rip away so that I can pull it off real easy. Um, it's a little bit back, um, it, it, so it's kind of uncomfortable to grab off, but I'm only going to be doing it one time, and I don't want to put it on my back, and simply because the reason that we keep things off of our back is because when they're on our back, if we're in any type of vehicle, it gets really, really old having something dig into your back. The other thing is, is it keeps you from shouldering a pack really well, so we want to try to limit our stuff on our back. Now you can see back there, I've got my Camelback holder on there, um, that's about the only thing that I tolerate on the back of me because I like to have that water, having that water with me and on me all the time. Uh, very, very important. Um, it keeps you hydrated. If you're pulling a water bottle out of a can or, or a canteen or something out of a backpack, you just find that you don't drink as much water and you're going to end up getting uh, dealing with dehydration. Um, and so that's why I, I feel very strongly that uh, you should have a Camelback on there. Then we're going to talk about, um, and I just clipped this on here real quick because I had it off or something else, uh, but we're talking about our, our, our radio pouch. Now, different radio pouches, different size. Get one that's sized accordingly to your radio. Uh, military guys, you're going to have those big ones because you have embitters. Uh, but if you're a civilian, you can use smaller radios, and so you can get a little bit smaller pouch. Um, you want to put that right behind. Um, usually, I would put it behind my right shoulder. Uh, you can put it behind your left shoulder, but you want it right behind it. And uh, the reason is because you got to give space for that antenna to come up and over. And you can tie that antenna down to keep it kind of out of the way. Uh, but you want to give that, that antenna space to come over. And then you're going to run your comms and have a mic here or whatever it is, mic, radio, 
however you want to set that up, but you're going to run your comms underneath your kit and up over a shoulder or in the strap here. Um, but we want to make sure that we can actually reach our volume and our channels here. So even if it's a little bit uncomfortable, we want to make sure we can get it. Now, we're not going to be flipping all the time, but if you're in a position where you're a leader in the military or in a law enforcement unit to where you're going to be switching back and forth between troop, platoon, battalion, nets, uh, you want to make sure that you, uh, that, that you can actually do that. Um, and so that's obviously very important to be able to reach back there and do that. Again, we don't want it so far back that it's going to be hitting when we actually go to sit in a vehicle uh, because if we're sitting in a vehicle, that's going to get really, really uncomfortable. Even pressing into that body armor, you'd think that that body armor would stop it, but it's just going to get really uncomfortable and it's going to dig into your back and it doesn't take long, it's about 10 minutes. Okay, I should say here, last thing is, and I don't have it on this one, is a night vision pouch. Uh, it does help to have a little pouch to hold your night vision. I usually keep that right behind my radio. Okay, ignore the belly because I put on some weight since the last time I did a video like this. But uh, anyways, so we've got our belt on here and you can see this is a VTAC belt. And I've gone back and forth on whether I like these battle belts and uh, as opposed to just having an actual solid belt on there. And what i found is that when you're actually patrolling or using your belt all day, uh, these are significantly more comfortable. And one of the reasons is that since I'm doing instructing and I'm going to be in this for eight hours at a time, uh, it's really nice to have this extra padding here. So uh, take that for what it's worth. It's not a necessity. Necessity, uh, but it does make it a lot more comfortable when you're wearing it all day. Um, it also holds that gear a little bit more secure uh, than just using an overbelt with uh, with belt keepers on there or something along those lines. Um, so if we come over here on the side, we've got our magazines real ready, so that way we can do a swap and get that magazine in there. Um, everything is a little bit canted forward, right forward to my hip, uh, but it's all very readily accessible um, and makes swapping magazines very, very easy um, and doing those reloads. Uh, if I can see it. Uh, these ones, I believe these are, I forget which brand these are. These might be the Blade Tech ones, I can't remember. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, anyways, we move back. I always keep a tourniquet. I've got multiple tourniquets. There's one on the IFAC on my kit. And then there's this one here that's rubber banded on. There's also one on my backpack. Uh, tourniquets, life-saving gear, guys. I'm a big fan of tourniquets. I always rubber band them on. I don't actually buy tourniquets packages. I like to rubber band them just because I can rip it off and I'm good to go. And they do hold pretty snug. Um, I think I went through one rubber band while I was in Afghanistan. Got our last ditch magazine here, last ditch effort magazine. Uh, I will probably pop another magazine back here, but the problem is, is again, like we were talking about when you're sitting, is that once you start coming back here with even more stuff, you're dealing with that pressing on your spine and it gets very, very uncomfortable. And so uh, we want to try to eliminate as much of that as possible. Um, now over here on this side, this is kind of our lethal side. So I do carry a knife over here. Some people carry a baton, something like that. But uh, I just uh, I, I find that a knife is pretty handy, so I keep one over here. There's a reason for that in a longer story, and I can go into that in a later video. But uh, well, um, the long and the short of it is, is I had a friend that kept one back there, um, and it ended up saving his life because he got pinned down underneath the uh, like two 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 fighters in Afghanistan. And uh, the only reason he was able to to to, to save himself is because his pistol had been drawn and his pistol was pressed against his chest like that so he let his pistol go and he pulled out of his knife and was able to kill him. Um, I like a retention holster that is not an active retention like this that is a, that is a passive where it's just a, uh, a firm grip on there. The one reason I keep this one on there and I like this one is uh, the reason I got this one initially, and I, or I was using ones like this, I, this because this is for my personal pistol, not my duty pistol, uh, but I had one of these for my Beretta uh, when I was in the Army, and it was the idea of it was for airborne operations, if you ever had to do one, you or an air assault operation, um, and I've only ever done training once, never had to do a live one, but uh, the, uh, the, the, the idea being is that I flip that snap up and it would keep that pistol secure in there. Okay, you kind of have to look at the belt as a case-by-case -case basis. This, the idea initially when I put it together was patrolling and now it's more geared towards uh, me actually teaching classes and doing what I need to do in, out there. So I, I like it to be a lot more comfortable now and that's, that's mostly what I look at with it. Uh, but if you're building one, one great option to set one up is actually a home invasion kit. And so having a kit that you th keep on your nightstand with a pistol, two magazines and a flashlight and maybe, maybe a pair of zip cuffs um, and that's ready to go that I can just snap that on and I can go and it doesn't matter what I have on. I can be out the door in my underwear and Crocs and uh, with, with a battle belt on, uh, ready to, to, to deal with whatever threat is out there. Uh, so you can throw something on there like your Surefire weapon light 
and then uh, you can have another flashlight on there uh, so that way you can see without having to point a weapon directly at somebody. So that would obviously be a slightly different setup. Still think it's worthwhile having a tourniquet on there. You may not need that, uh, that M4 magazine there in the back, uh, so that, that may not be a necessity then. Uh, but still something good to consider and to, to think about whether you should have it on there. Um, it, again, mine is set up for teaching and with the kind of leftover ideas of patrolling while I was in Afghanistan and in the military. Um, and so that's more what mine was geared towards. Um, obviously, law enforcement, you would have slightly different requirements on there. Um, and so, so yours might be even be even slightly different. Uh, but this should give you kind of a general idea of the principles that go behind putting this together. Um, one other quick rule to keep in mind is that on your pistol side, um, you want to, this should be the lethality side. Uh, and that's why I don't agree with keeping a baton over there. I would keep a baton uh, somewhere else Act accessible. Uh, I would probably keep it right in front of my magazine to where I could actually draw it um, and uh, and strike with it. <clears throat> But uh, I do know some people like to keep it there behind their, uh, their pistol. But I like to know that this side, this is my lethal, lethal side. So this is, if I'm reaching here, this is a muscle memory thing to where I'm coming down here and I'm ready to be lethal. Or if that's if it's not the case for the knife um, I'm, or for the gun, I've got my knife there. And uh, again, it's just the idea of, of, of having lethality all in one area and uh, in, in, I guess training a certain amount of muscle memory into this. So anyways guys, um, like I said, this was just kind of an update video. I thought it would be a little bit fun to get one out because that seemed to be a very popular video in the past. Um, and I uh, hope this kind of gives you guys some more information. Maybe lets you know some things that I've changed, some things that I haven't. Um, and uh, like I said, if anybody's got any mag pouch suggestions for the M4, um, right now like I, I've been fairly happy with this Blade Tech one. That, that's the Kydex one on my belt. Uh, but I haven't found a good one that I like yet for my vest. Um, I think I'm going to give the G-Code ones a try. Um, but uh, anyways, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll go through. I've got different ones. I may have some G-Code ones. I can't remember. Uh, but, uh, but I do want to try some. So if anybody's got any suggestions, please throw that in the comment box down below. Let me know if y'all do anything different with yours, anything else that you like to see set up in it. Uh, I really appreciate y'all watching. Remember, freedom comes in all calibers.